Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins and this lesson is called Making Wires with WireMaker. So WireMaker was a script that I wrote uh, the original version of about 20 years ago and I wrote a tutorial on how to use it uh, but over the years a number of people have said hey it'd be really great if you could do a video tutorial about how to use it. So um, better late than never I guess. Um, this tutorial is hopefully going to answer all the questions you have about the script. So first, a little history. Um, the very first version of the script was written for 3D Studio Max, and it was called Wire Jumble. And it was part of the Blur scripts um, because uh, at the time I was working for Blur Studio. Then after I left Blur, uh, I could no longer work on the Blur scripts, so I wrote from scratch a similar script that had a bunch of extra features, and it was called Wire Bundler. And that was given away for free as part of the Solburn scripts. And then a number of years after that, uh, I was going through all my scripts. I had about a hundred different scripts, and they were all named completely, you know, incoherent random things. And so I decided to do a pass on the names and give them all names that, uh, you know, were consistent with each other. And so what I did was I took Wire Bundler and I renamed it WireMaker. And um, it's basically the same script, but again, I also added a few extra features to it. So you may have used this script before under one of these three names. Um, and they're all basically the same idea. And uh, the most recent version is WireMaker, which is the one I'd recommend using. So before getting into the meat of the tutorial, uh, just a few example images showing the script being used. I believe this was the very first uh, image that I made using the script. And this shows this piece of machinery that is uh, plugged into this um, human skin uh, back here. And you can see all of these wires that are connected to this machinery and how they all kind of flow. There's a whole bunch of them sort of braided together. And this is very time consuming to do uh, by hand, uh, each an individual uh, wire. And so that was the reason that I wanted to have a, a script that did something to speed this process up so I wouldn't have to keep doing this by hand. Here's another one that I did a number of years later, same idea, a whole bunch of uh, wires coming out of this um, robot's head. This one has fewer wires, uh, but same general idea where you have these braided wires that are uh, kind of forming tentacles on this big um, um, monster uh, robot that's coming out of the, uh, the mist. This one's a little bit more straightforward, but um, same idea. All of these um, um, wires or, or pipes that are uh, curved around on this robot. And then this is the ink robot, and this one, it's far more subtle, but even here, um, for the wires that are underneath the arms and the legs and uh, ones that are traveling down the body, I used WireMaker in order to make this guy too, just because it, uh, again, speeds up the process of doing this sort of stuff. So we'll start off with the simplest of examples. Uh, here I am inside of 3D Studio Max, and then um, I will have a link in the description of where to download the script itself. And once you install and run the script, you're going to see a UI that looks kind of like this. Now in this lesson, I'm not going to go through every single feature in here, but I'm just going to go through a couple of examples of the most common things that I do with it. And then once you have that, those basics, um, hopefully you'll be able to then expand that out and try out some of the other, other options. But let's start off with the, the simplest case, and that is just a regular jumble of wires. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a set of spheres, and these three spheres are targets. So the idea behind the most straightforward wire jumble is it will take a random point on this sphere and then take a random point on this sphere and a random point on this sphere and it'll connect a spline between those um, different points. And then it'll do the same thing again and again. And the end result is you have this sort of uh, jumble of wires. So let me just show you how that works. So I select them in order. And then I move selected to target list, and that's the target list here of, of the three different spheres. And then um, I'm going to set it to create new splines, and um, for the simple example, renderable spline. Number of wires, I'm going to do, say, 20. And I'll leave everything else here to uh, the defaults. Um, for example, under wire appearance, you see here it'll do a random wire thickness between 1 and 2. Um, the, this is the number of sides that'll be in the wire, it'll make them renderable, it'll uh, put mapping coordinates, that kind of stuff. So let me hit apply. 
and there we go. So let me uh, just hit this button here, hide targets, and that hides the targets that you're using. And we can see we have this jumble of wires going uh, between those three different spots. Now, uh, let me delete that particular one and let's uh, increase the thickness of these wires just so that they take up more space. Okay, still a little small. Let's try doubling it again. Better. Let's do one last one. Let's say uh, like that. Yeah, so that gives you some idea of what you can do as far as just if you need these random wires uh, going from place to place. Now you notice here that wires are sticking into each other and uh, there's no collision detection or anything in this uh, script. And so in the cases where you do see an obvious um, uh, intersection here, all I do is I just go in and I manually fix it by hand. So just move it like that. And usually with any of these these bundles, once you look through the camera, there's usually only about like five spots where you'll see an interpenetration, so they're they're pretty easy to fix. Now, you don't only have to use spheres with this. You can use any sort of object you want, any sort of mesh you want. And I'm going to show a slightly different example, not only of a different object type, but also um, a different result you can get, where you can kind of get this braid effect. So let me just create a cylinder here, and I will delete the top and the bottom. So it's just these sides. Then I'm going to copy it here and then copy it here, kind of similar to the sphere example from before. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one, I'm going to rotate it around by 90 degrees. And then I'm going to rotate this one by 180 degrees. Now, if I run the script and I do the same thing where I grab these guys and uh, move selected, and if I just hit go like the last time, It'll do the same thing that it did last time, where it'll pick a random one from here, a random one from here, and a random spot on here, and then put lines through. But that's not exactly what we're looking to do here. So let's do something a little different. And um, just so it's more obvious, let me increase the size of the thickness again. So instead of target interpolation vertex, which means picking a random vertex from these three different uh, pieces of geometry, there's something called vert to vert. And so what vert to vert does is every um, vertex in an object has an index. So um, this one, what it'll do is it'll take vertex number one and it'll connect it to vertex number one in the second target and then go to vertex number one of the third object. So let's hit apply. So now what that means is that because I rotated these three different guys, it'll go from here on the front for this one to sort of the side for this one to the back on this one. And what you end up getting, if I just turn off this grid, is this kind of curved effect where it twists around. And that's a pretty cool looking thing when you have these uh, bundles of wires. If you don't want them to be completely random, you can have them look as though they're all sort of together in a bundle, but then they've been twisted around by uh, where they've been placed. So let's go back to our regular bundle or jumble idea, except this time instead of just a renderable spline connecting them, we're going to have them take real geometry and deform it around the, um, uh, the jumble. So these are a set of wires that I made. Let's just turn that on. So you can see these guys here. And not only is it um, a, um, a wire going um, along here, but then there are all these sort of attachments and connectors on top of it, which is a pretty standard thing to see on uh, more complex uh, wire assemblies. OK, so what I'm going to do is I will do our three spheres again. And um, then select these guys, do the selection to target list, but then instead of renderable spline, I'm going to choose path deform. 
And path deform is a modifier in Max that basically will take any object and deform it along a uh, spline. And so that's what we're going to do here. So the first thing we're going to do is... Here, let me uh, stop that for a moment. Okay. So I'm going to select these five different um, wires that I made. I'm going to move them to the deform list. And you can see those guys down in here. Now, um, just a quick note before I go further, by the way, on creating these sorts of things. When you create them, um, after, to get this to work properly, uh, once you've made uh, the, the wire here, you need to do a couple of little preps. Uh, first of all, take all the parts and connect them together. So don't have like this part separate from this. Have it all one object, one attached object. Number two, reset the X form on it. Um, and there's um, a script um, that I have, uh, resetting X form script. Uh, as part of the Solburn script. So you can just use that or any other uh, XForm reset script in order to do that. And then finally, you'll note that the pivot is down at the bottom of the wire. And if you've done those three things, then this should work pretty well. So um, let's start off with under here. We'll just use the defaults here for uh, 10 wires. And let's just hit apply and see what we get. And there you go. You can see that now those wires are deformed along these splines. And that is exactly the technique I used in order to do that image I showed you at the beginning um, of all the wires going into the, um, uh, the piece of machinery that's uh, jabbing into the person's skin. So this allows you to add a lot more detail to your, um, your your jumbles rather than just regular straight lines. And you know, once you put a few textures on this, then you're all set to go. And in here, there's some uh, some more features you can uh, take a look at. For example, uh, again, min and max thickness, where it'll choose a, a value in between. Uh, you can also set a random rotation. So if, like, say you have uh, the same wire over and over again, like you only have one of these instead of five of these, you can set it where it'll randomly rotate, um, tw uh, twisting them around. And then there's also a taper feature, which um, here, I'll show you that really, really briefly. Let me just um, delete the last one. And if you turn on taper and you hit apply, You'll note that it starts off being thick, and then as it goes towards the end, it gets thin. Now, this may not be appropriate for wires, because most wires are usually the same thickness all the way along, but this is a way of sort of doing um, tentacles uh, with the, the, the same sort of idea. So this one is uh, similar to the others, but instead of using the script to make the splines, I'm actually going to use my own splines. Um, but I'm going to then use um, the wire appearance uh, here to um, set up a path deform. So let's say that I create my own line right here. I'll just make these smooth. And then under here, under wire type, instead of uh, creating new splines, I say use existing splines. And then let's just make a couple of these. And I'll move these to the spline list. Then I'll grab these guys. And instead of renderable spline, I'll use path deform. And move those here. And then hit apply. And you can see it uses the splines that already exist. And um, in which case, this script now is basically just being used as a real simple and fast way to um, assign path deform to these objects so that they move along the splines. Another reason I might use this um, sometimes is let's say that I have a piece of geometry, like for example, a, a box here. And I want, like, say, a wire uh, to go along the edge of the box. So what I will do is I will go Editable Poly. I'll select, let's say, these three edges. And then under Edit Edge, I will go to Create Shape from Selection. And now 
I have, you can see here, the spline that's going along that edge. And then let me take this guy and I will go to, so that one is now in the deform list. And then I will grab this and I will say use existing splines and I'll just add that spline to there. And then when I hit apply, there you go. So you can use any arbitrary spline and assign um, your wire to it. And here is one last example where I use the script sometimes. So let's say that I'm working on a tree branch. So let me create a set of splines that kind of form a branch. And uh, one over here. Let me just make these a uh, darker color so it's really visible. There we go. So what I will do is I will then grab these guys and say instead of creating new splines, use existing splines. Then instead of path deform or renderable spline, I'll use spline mesher. Now spline mesher is a plugin uh, that is available on maxplugins.de and um, it's easier just to show it what it does rather than explain it what it does. So let me just hit apply here. And so what this does is it applies a spline mesher uh, modifier onto a line and it has all these parameters for basically starting off thick and then going thin along the length of um, the spline. And then afterwards I can go in here and I can mess with these various parameters to get various different shapes um, that I want for the the tree. So for example um, down in here um, I'll take the radius malt down since it's one of the smaller branches and then uh, this one here maybe I'll I'll go up since it's the more major branch and then this one here I'll probably not go quite as thin and anyway um, so let's say that I have you know several hundred of these branches what I'll do is I'll use this to sort of assign um, the the plugin uh, modifier to all the different branches then I'll go in and manually tweak and then if I'm gonna get close to this tree later on what I'll do is I'll manually go in and and attach these uh, together or boolean them together and then smooth them out but it's just a nice uh, faster way of uh, making tree branches that doesn't involve a lot of manually adding all these different modifiers to um, these different uh, existing splines and of course, if you want to, you can use a spline mesher on um, uh, creating new splines using a, a jumble. But uh, most often I use this on splines that already exist. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope uh, if you had any questions about this script and how to use it, um, they're generally answered by this uh, tutorial. Feel free to ask me any more questions if you have any more in the comments below. And uh, please visit my website, neilblevins.com, and go to the art lessons area if you'd like to see more tutorials. Or feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you'd like to be notified next time I post a video. So thank you very much.